I'm Linda Kincaid with CEDAR, the Coalition for Elder and Dependent Adult Rights. Eleanor Frerich's civil rights are in danger. Conservator Scott Phipps petitioned Alameda County Probate Court to strip Eleanor of her right to have contact with family and friends. Eleanor, age 91, could spend her remaining years locked in an isolated and locked facility. No visitors, no phone calls, and no mail. Phipps and prior conservators kept Eleanor isolated for two years. Phipps placed Eleanor into a locked dementia facility, although Eleanor was not diagnosed with dementia. Phipps annulled Eleanor's marriage, although Eleanor and her husband stated they loved each other and wished to remain married. Phipps voided Eleanor's will, although psychologists determined that Eleanor had the capacity to execute that will. This Friday, September 12th, Phipps will bring a petition before the court to permanently take away Eleanor's right to visitation. Eleanor has a right to ask the judge to replace Phipps as her conservator. She has a right to ask the judge to end the conservatorship. But Eleanor can only secure those rights if Phipps allows her to attend her hearing on Friday. We ask that this board support Eleanor Frerich's right to visitation, phone calls, legal counsel, and her right to attend hearings on her case. We ask that Oakland Police Department conduct a thorough investigation of Scott Phipps' crimes against Eleanor Frerichs. We ask that Alameda County establish a volunteer conservatorship monitoring program as recommended by the American Bar Association. Only with an appropriate volunteer monitoring program will similar travesties be prevented in the future. Please make Alameda County a safe place to grow old. Good afternoon. I am Gwen Bouzet, and I'm a member of the Congress of California Seniors. Each of you supervisors received an email from me this morning. It's about a 91-year-old elder, Eleanor Frittrich, that has been have not been diagnosed with dementia. No, she's been identified as being a very rich old woman. And through and by her conservator, Scott Phelps, Eleanor has systematically been locked away in a dementia facility, and her companion, her little dog, was taken away from her. Not only have Eleanor's human rights been denied, but to strip an elder of her companion, of her pet, her best friend at 91 years old, that goes beyond cruel to me. I'm here to ask you for your intervention, for in any way you can to stop this forced isolation of a 91-year-old elder, that at this time in her life, she needs for people to call on her. She needs for people to, to, to visit, and she needs her animal with her. This is a little bitty dog. If she has a lot of money, she can afford it. She should be put back in her home. There's a case in, in Santa Clara County where they did put the woman back in her home uh, with 24-7 care around the clock with nurses and, and home care workers, everything. She can afford it. That's what should be done so she can live out the rest of her days with her loving pet and friends surrounding her. That's all I ask. Take care of our elders, please. God bless. Good morning. I'm Karen Anderson with the Congress of California Seniors, and I join with Linda and Gwen in asking that you put forth your energy towards allowing the conservator, in this case, Mr. Phipps, to accompany Ms. Friedrich to her hearing this Friday so that she can voice for her own concerns, her interest in her own case. She has been denied the ability to attend her own court hearings through the fact that the conservator would not allow anyone to come to the facility and remove her to attend her court hearings. Today, we ask that her rights to lead the facility and to have visitors be reinstituted 
so that she can attend her hearing this Friday in Berkeley at the probate court, September 12th at 9.30. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Richard Calhoun. I'm a member of CEDAR. CEDAR stands for the Coalition of Elder Independent Adult Rights. Guess what? Elders and independent adults have rights in the state, but it's widespread abuse. A couple years ago, we started finding out about this project. I think it was about 2010. Last year, we introduced a bill called AB 937. It passed the state legislature on a 100 to 4 vote. Guess what? The news hasn't reached this county yet. I don't understand. And that wasn't even new law. It was clarifying existing law if you read any of the analysis. We don't lose those personal rights. We may lose our right to sign a check, but that's what they're claiming. They're claiming Eleanor is a victim of potential future financial abuse and therefore has to be completely isolated. Well, guess what? Even if we got her to sign a check, it was worthless. She doesn't control her own money. Financial and social interaction is completely different. Look at our people on death row. They get visitors. I happen to have a little insight. In the last week, we went over there as a white Caucasian couple, and we were able to see Eleanor. When we found out that we knew some African Americans that knew Eleanor, the cops were called on us. Amazing. We would have been kicked out if we didn't have copies of AB 937 with us. Then just Sunday, I happened to be there again. The people at the front happened to be African American. They wouldn't even open up the door. They wouldn't even allow people in the door to say we wanted to see Eleanor. There's something wrong. Go back to June. I did a public records request. Alameda County is one of 39 counties that responded. Thank you for responding. There's a problem with your response. The county and the court both claim they don't have a contract with the court-appointed attorneys. The state bar requires there to be a contract with the court-appointed attorneys. You're hiring people that don't follow the state bar regulations. That means they're unethical to begin with. I don't know where else to go. This is absurd. Any one of us is an attorney elder tomorrow, but any one of us who walk out of this building and become an adult, a dependent adult by getting hit by a car or a truck. I got rear-ended three years ago at 55 miles an hour. I became darn close to becoming a dependent adult. We don't lose our personal rights. The, apparently, the people that want to visit this lady even agreed to visitation you know, supervised visitation. They shouldn't need to do that, but they agreed, and yet no supervised visitation could be arranged. Same thing happened in my mother-in-law's case, but, you know, it's just common everyday occurrences. They're little old ladies. They've lived their life. They're disposable. Let's get rid of them. Wake up. Take care of our elders. I, I realize we don't speak under, uh, we're not really allowed to discuss items under open form because it's not on the agenda, therefore everybody hasn't been noticed, but the, the issue about the elder abuse, um, is that been noted by either social services or the district attorney that, you know, this is something that we need to look into prior to Friday? Yeah, we're looking into it. Well, I didn't know that. That's why I'm asking the question. I didn't know we're looking now. Yeah. As, as you know, there is a public guardian in the county, and so our office handles um, a variety of cases where individuals um, need to be conserved and the public guardian, guardian is assigned to perform that role. I can't speak to this case because I, you know, I right. wasn't but aware I'm just asking we arrived that there here. be some sort of investigation. <laughs> we, and it I sounds mean, like Supervisor Miley's doing it now. Okay, all right. But I can certainly follow up with my staff and determine whether or not it's a case that the county is already involved in or not. Okay, and I for one would like some sort of follow up on it. Okay, 